Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be going a little bit farther on the 428 Ford engine that we have. I got the heads back from the machine shop and I'm going to show you how to bolt them on. We got some head gaskets, I got some bolts over there, and I need to get some thread sealer and a few other things like tools and such, but let's get started. Alright, so uh, we got the head bolts here. See, in, in the, um, these are the ones that are off. I'm not sure. I got two or three sets of head bolts. And I'm going to chink down here so I'm not cutting myself out of the photo. I took a set that's cleanest. Um, Fords have uh, 10 bolts. These 428s have 10 bolts, uh, 10 head bolts. And five, five per head that are this long, and five per head that are this long. And so it's a total of 20 bolts total. Um, if you're into Chevys and stuff, there's a lot more. I think small block Chevy is 16, a big block Chevy is 17, something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, we want to do is what we're going to do is we're going to get all this muck off of the head bolts. And the reason being is that that you can't get a good torque reading if you got garbage in your threads. So this is the way I do it. See this old drill here? This is like a 1960s or 70s um, uh, Black & Decker. It's a single speed, non-reversible drill. Belonged to my dad. It's probably older than I am. And um, uh, so what I do is I got a cup wire brush on here. And I just turn it on like that. Lock the key in. Put on my reading glasses. They, they, they operate as safety glasses. Right? There you go. That long bolt's pretty nice already. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and I'm going to paint the heads because the heads are blue from when the engine was blue. The engine's now gold, as you saw. And I'm going to uh, the short ones are only ones that are that are also um, uh, visible when the engine's put together because these long ones are underneath the valve covers in the valve train. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the head bolts with some of my gold BHT paint here, and, um, and so it matches the heads. Otherwise, I could also paint them black. I got some uh, black engine paint here, too. I can do it, so I'll give a little bit of contrast. Um, I haven't decided yet. So, now that we got two of them done, we have 18 more to go. And uh, let's get, get finishing up these bolts. So here are all 20 bolts. Wait a minute, there's 21. 21. So I'm on, I ended up with like 11 of these. Mm, that's weird. Anyways, I'll pick out the t 10 best and I'll paint them. Uh, these are all... See, I have another set of bolts in the bag there as well. Uh, this is what happens when you have like seven engines at one time. And you throw all the bolts in one box. I was going to use thread sealer, but then I realized I forgot that these Ford engines have blind bolt holes. Now, what does that mean? That means that the bolt hole doesn't go anywhere. Um, it's, it's see it, it it doesn't go into the water jacket. It doesn't go into the uh, an oil galley. And if you if you look down here, you see if you can see with the light how the the bowl basically dead ends is what it, the bowl hole dead ends. So see, there's nothing there. Um, let's see. See, there's it down. Okay, and then uh, what we're doing is I'm just double checking this. If because if the bowl hole for the cylinder head is blind, you don't need thread sealer. You use motor oil on the threads instead of thread sealer. Like on Chevys, you have to have uh, most of the head bolts, unless you have an aftermarket block, uh, or go into the water jacket. And you don't use motor oil, otherwise you'll have a head bolt that's seeping out water and you don't know why. So I'm just double checking all of these just to be on the safe side because you can see down in there that it just, it kind of goes to a dead end. And which is what you want. You want, um, 
want to be confirming that you're not going to have oil leakage or or water coming out of your uh, bolt holes because that would be bad. Uh, got the bolts painted, decided to paint them semi-gloss black. All the accessories are black. That'll kind of give them a nice contrast to the gold. Uh, like I say, I didn't do the uh, long ones because they go through the, the head up here. And, um, and they're hidden underneath the valve cover, so what's the point of painting those? Alright, so the next thing we got to do while the bolts are drying is we got to put the head gaskets on. So there's two here. They came with a, I have a full gasket kit there over there. These are Fell Pros. And uh, they're very specific on how they go on the engine. Now you see how this engine has a slot for water cooling there and one there. But um, you don't want to use both of them. And the cylinder head gasket actually has one slot open and one slot blocked. And it says uh, front. So obviously it's dummy proof. You put this one on. So it says front at the front, back at the back, and your this water jacket is open here, but the front one is not. Why is this important? Well, you want to do is that you're controlling water flow from out of the block into the cylinder head. What this does is that the water comes from the back of this block here up into the cylinder head jet water jacket and goes forward and then goes in uh, towards the uh, towards the uh, out of the intake manifold up here and then uh, and then you know the intake manifolds here but you have a water, a water crossover here on the intake manifold right and then the thermostats up here on the front it's on the front on these forwards and what it does is it comes up here and it goes out what you're trying to do is you're trying to control the water flow so into the cylinder head without this on here correctly what happens is the water will come straight up here yeah, straight out of this slot here underneath this gasket and it will uh, Go up here and then what happens is the water the engine will get hotter and hotter and hotter and you'll have a random uh, Engine that's randomly getting hot We got this one on on this side. It, it's um, This side doesn't have the stripe on it like the other side when it's up. They're basically the exact same gasket uh, one just is upside down to the other and You can see how these little bit the holes are smaller uh, underneath the gasket then uh, through the gasket than they are uh, The actual hole in the block that also controls water flow You also want to make sure that your fire ring isn't getting inside Your bore here Right, you don't want your fire ring. This is your fire ring here. This is the steel ring that goes around on your head, uh, your head gasket You don't want that being smaller than your uh, bore to your your in your engine and these are pretty close, so it's going to give us a, uh, it's not too big, and it's not too small, it's nice size, it's not exact, uh, which is, uh, you know, these are pretty universal for most FE engines. Okay, I'm going to set the head on the block, and I'll just start with this one right here, and we're going to put it on side. Now... These things are heavy, so you got to be careful how you pick it up. Also, you want to make sure that you set it down nice and easy. Now, there are dowels in the block here. See the dowel that goes through the head gasket? That kind of aligns the head to where it's supposed to be. And it also helps to hold the head on the, on the, on the block like this. Uh, since I'm not quite ready to... to uh, Torque the heads on, hold belts on. So I'm just going to run one head bolt down in here by my fingers like this. That'll keep the head from falling off in the meantime. So um, I'm just going to run it down with my fingers like that. That way the cylinder head does not fall off while you go get the other one. See how I have my fingers in the port? What am I doing? Huh? 
interior. Your head doesn't have any gunk on it. <laughs> this is kind of awkward, but hey, I had it sitting on wood, so I don't want any sawdust in here. I'm gonna, what I'm holding it is I'm holding it in the in the ports like this, which is. And it slides on nice and easy. The way you're not gouging the head gasket either. Start the bolt. See how nice the bolt goes in? That means your uh, my machine shop cleaned the bolt threads out and for me on all the head on the, all the bolts in the block for me. They ran a tap down this. Now if you're doing this on a on a, on like an old engine, you're just replacing the cylinder heads on an older engine, and the engine's still in the car. Um, you might want to do is you might want to take a thread chaser tool, which is similar to a tap, and but different than a tap, where it doesn't cut the threads. It doesn't cut threads. It just uh, cleans the threads out, and uh, make sure your ta your threads are all nice and clean. Because if they're all filled with gunk and grease and muck and all the other stuff, it'll mess up your torque reading, which is what we need to do next. We need to find out what these head bolts are torqued at. What I have in my, uh, I have a, a few of these. These are you know, motors, auto repair manuals. These are like the uh, older versions of Mitchell manuals that mechanics used to use as a reference guide before everything was put on computer and disc and everything else. This one was printed in 1970. And it has a lot of different information on working on different, uh, for, um, different manufacturers of cars. And what we're looking for is engine tightening specification and specifically cylinder head torque right so this is a 428 and uh, we want 80 to 90 pounds I'm gonna probably do 90 pounds and uh, if you don't know the bolt pattern on the what which uh, they would have that in here as well here's a cylinder head uh, let's see your uh, Ford V8s okay so here it is uh, so this is the pattern for uh, for torquing the bolts down. Now, if you if you really don't know what the specific bolt pattern is, the easiest way to do is most every single cylinder head is torqued the same way. Is you start at the centermost bolt and you just kind of work your way out in a consist uh, in a spiral pattern, getting wider and wider and wider until you cover all the bolts. Right, start in the center. And work your way out until you come in like this. That is an easy thing to remember and it won't get you in trouble. But if you have, you can always look these up. So most of all this stuff's online now and right at the fingertips of your cell phone. So what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just dipping the bolt into the oil. And then I'm just gonna put it in like that. So, actually, do it the other way. So you got oil on threads.
what I'm doing right now is I'm just snugging down the bolts. I'm not trying to torque them at all. So, 90 pounds. So, I want to go up in three steps. So, what I normally do is I do like, so it's 90, so, say 50, 70, and 90. So, I'll start at 50. Let's see here. Okay, that's 50. So, I'm going to... I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here. So... You kind of hear the oil being squeezed out. Mm -hmm. All right, so up to seventy. This is where you need a little more leverage, so I'm going to give myself a little more leverage. Oh shit. <laughs> Obviously, you want to keep the bolt, the, the wrench flat, so you don't strip the thread, uh, strip the corners off the bolt. Mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in from behind. That way, I have more leverage, and I can keep the bolt from moving around. And if you got an engine hoist that actually rolls around like mine do, mine does, and then get progressively harder. Okay, we're at ninety. Still work out your arms doing all this all day. When I worked in blueprint engines, there's a guy that all they did all day was install head bolts. I talk about a workout. Now they might have <laughs> modern machines actually were torquing these down by you know with a machine that's automatically torques them all at once every head bolt at once they might even done that when this engine was built so going back to 50 on this side So I decided for the 428 that I'm going to be reusing the camshaft that I had 
Now, a lot of you are going, well, you can't reuse an old camshaft. Well, yes, you can. A lap flat tappet camshaft. You can. But you got to do something like this. When you have to pull the lifters out, you, you mark where they go. So I know exactly where this particular lifter goes. This one goes on the left front, at the front. See, I marked it. Front, passenger side, and rear. All the lifters are, were on this can shaft, and I know exactly where they go. So I'm going to put it in. What I'm going to do is uh, I got some Iski Rev Lube. I like this stuff. You can get it through Summit Racing or you can order it directly from Iski. And the reason being is is it's it's uh, there's a lot of other cam lubes out there. Then some of it comes with camshafts, like cam, uh, cam stuff. This stuff is more um, thicker. And so if your engine is going to sit around for a while, it won't drip off your camshaft lube. So, but even though the camshaft is broken in and has about two hours of runtime on it, I'm still going to put this on there just to be on the safe side. And when I start the engine on the run stand, I'm going to run it for about 20 minutes anyways because it's got new cam bearing, new bearings and rings and all that. And I need to break all that in as well as well. So I might as well make sure that the camshaft is protected. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting assembly lube on the bearings and then cam lube on the lobes and I'm only doing the front four the two front bearings or the back bearings I should say in the front and the and the four lobes and the reason being is is because I want to get this part of the cam in the block before trying to add lube to the rest of it because I'm going to be using the rest of the camshaft to hold on to so you're going to have like if you try to put this stuff all over the camshaft on every lobe all you're going to do is end up with all that all over your hands and you make a big mess. So what I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this in the engine and I'll, let me get the camera on a stand. Alright, so I'm going to sit, start sliding this in. See how I'm using the camshaft here uh, as for leverage? I also have a ginormous bolt stuck in the back of here. It's a 3 8 bolt, even though this is a five, uh, 7 16 bolt hole. But it'll actually act, help as, an, as a handle. And what you got to do, you got to be very careful going through with the bearings so you don't scratch the bearings. Um, also with the lobes. So I'm rotating the camshaft as I go to make sure that there's low, uh, that the bearings are moving nice and easy. Then I'm going to take the, the rev lube and I, I'm going to apply it liberally to each one of the cam lobes. All right, and you can rotate the camshaft doing this. See. This way you only have one finger really getting dirty instead of your both your hands. Now don't be afraid to go liberal on this. This tub here has lasted me. I had the last one. I actually just bought a new one. I've done like 10 or 12 camshafts on one of these tubs. So. Okay. So I got that on there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this luber plate on the cam bearing, like so. Put my fingers on. And then I'm going to, I don't know if you can see, let me see. Uh, I'm going to. There. See, this is a this is a bolt here. It's a little bit out of out of the frame of the camera there, but see now, I'm holding the camshaft up as I pass the lobes through, and then I get it onto the next bearing, and the front bearing here is sitting on the bearing shell, 
and and I'm just spinning this nice and easy add more to the next four Rotating around so I can see the, what I haven't got. Now what this stuff does is it adds a layer of protection while you're trying to get the engine started. And the reason being is, and why this is really important, is, is that the camshaft is made of a different material than the lifters. The camshaft is made out of cast iron. The lifters are made out of tool steel. And as dissimilar metals, that the, that's what the zinc is for. The zinc is actually uh, like the sacrificial lamb between the two. And it's, uh, it adds, the zinc and the oils adds an extra layer between the two. So they're happy riding on top of each other. Otherwise, without the zinc, and the dissimilar metals, they would start to wear into each other. And um, then you have um, then you have a cam lobe going uh, going flat, and a lifter that starts to cup out on you. So this is what the handle's for now. So try to get this through. Careful. This is where it gets harder the farther the camshaft goes in. Yeah. These cam lobes, as you're passing it through the block, all the rest of the cam bearings, if you drop the cam lobe onto the bearing and drag it through, you can actually put a big scratch in it. And that could actually hurt your uh, oil pressure, which you don't want to do. So. So, the cam still rotates nice sitting on the bearings so we don't have any bearings that are super tight if you can't get your cam to turn fairly easily then there's something really wrong with your cam bearings and if you don't solve it now you're going to have a real problem and very shortly after you fire up the engine mm. And then you can actually put some on here as well. It's not super important when you got a cast iron gear on your distributor and a cast iron gear on your on your on your uh, camshaft, but when you're starting to get into billet stuff and roller camshafts with um, melanized gears on the on the distributor and stuff, it make, becomes more important that that has some lube on it. To protect it while while you get the engine started up before it has oil on it. So this is where the handle comes in. Okay, come on, baby. Ooh. Okay. Well. Oh, jeez. Now I'm gonna get, make a mess. Well, it's it's wedged. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, I almost got it all the way in. She's been stubborn there for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now to put in the timing set. So the camshaft in, I put the, uh, the cam gear on, on the trend, on the crankshaft. The dot is up, pointing upwards. You see that? I'm going to tip this down a bit. Hang on a second. There we go. So the dot is pointing upwards on the, on the camshaft or crankshaft gear. I was about to put the timing set on, but I forgot this plate right here, which, uh, they call it a camshaft retainer plate. This is what you get when you're used to working on Chevys most of your life. And not a lot of Fords, as you forget stuff. Alright, so I'm just using a single, um, single roller timing. Get my rather large screwdriver. Put these in. I am not using Loctite on these because I don't want to have a big fight if I got to take it off. Hmm, that's weird, it's off center. Maybe I got this backwards. The hole here is off center to the camshaft. So, let's see here. Like that. Oh uh, no! Like this. Oh, that's better. All right, so I had it on backwards. All right. Here's the cam gear. It has a pin that I already put in it. And this one has a dot here as well that points downward. So it's dot to dot. And the little pin goes in the uh, into the uh, camshaft there. I'm going to tap this on with my little That's good. There is a, this is what they, this is your, um, this is what they call your, uh, um, it's a cup for this one actually rotates it, it actuates your uh, your fuel pump uh, cup I don't know the exact name of it that's a 5 8 let me grab a 5 8 ratchet now remember we had the, uh, the crankshaft at number one top dead center and that way everything goes lines up together. And this is supposed to be torqued to 45 foot pounds. There you go. Now it's nice and taut. All right. Can't forget this. This is your uh, what they call an oil slinger. It goes over the crankshaft, like so. 
I'm gonna put that on right now. I'm gonna hose this off with our brake cleaner because it's kind of dirty. Okay. All right. So the next thing is the timing cover, which I gotta find mine. <laughs> Mine's at. I gotta look it up. I gotta go find it. Tune in later. Later. Okay, we're gonna stop here on this video. Excuse me, I'm filthy. I've been doing suspension work on the car here, but I can stop here on the 428. Uh, we're, we're I gotta clean up a timing cover, and all I got is like greasy, dirty timing covers, and one that's painted hideous green. So I gotta clean one up before I can go any farther. Timing cover goes on, and then the oil pan and. And then, uh, then I can flip the engine back over and then start working on like the intake manifold, which I got to take in and get the paint baked off of that one. So uh, I'm going to follow along. Uh, there will be more on the 428. Thanks for watching.